Hi, my name's Temba Mvula. I'm an opera singer and uh, I'm due to make my debut with English Touring Opera in their next season, which I'm really looking forward to. Now, their current season has had to be cancelled due to the COVID-19 outbreak, but English Touring Opera have been pretty amazing, I think, and uh, paid all of their artists and freelancers in full for uh, any shows that have been cancelled this season which is just a really great thing of them to do. And like I say, I can't wait to perform with the company myself. This is uh, singing lesson number eight in the series of singing lessons for adults, which ETO have provided. Um, there are also singing lessons for kids available. So if you know any, any kids, any young people you think would be interested, then please do spread the word and share this with them. Uh, in the series so far, there's been all sorts of things covered uh, to do with singing, you know, breath, posture, resonance, consonance. Um, there's just some really great stuff. Um, and I, so if you haven't already um, seen those videos, then I encourage you do check them out because there's just some really useful stuff in there, stuff that I found useful myself. Um, and also just some really, uh, really fascinating insights into how other singers work and think and approach, approach their singing. Last week's lesson was uh, given by Susanna Hurrell, and I'd like to thank her for her lesson. And uh, she also sent me some homework, which uh, I'm going to come to later on in, in this session. Um, but she talked a lot about breath, uh, alignment and posture really key things which um, I found useful and, and a lot of which I do myself, which is uh, it's just great. So do check that out as well. So what I'd like to do is share with you a couple of things that I've been working on or thinking about in my own singing. Now, uh, as you would have, if you've been watching the previous videos, the, you'll realize there's so much going on, uh, so much going on when you're singing different muscles working, different things going on. And what I find difficult sometimes is being able to focus on what it is that I'm actually communicating and allowing the other stuff to sort of happen more naturally and organically without me having to sort of really think and concentrate on the other stuff. I want to be able to communicate freely without brain space, head space taken up with the, with the other stuff, um, which is possible and, and should be sort of our goal, I think, as singers is to have that freedom to communicate um, without sort of thinking, overthinking everything. So that's what I've been trying to get to. And, and there's a couple of things that help me achieve that. And so I'd like to share with them with you in this lesson. Uh, so the first part of this is, I guess, there's two sides to this. The first part is a very physical part, and it's about keeping loose. Now, because there are so many uh, muscles involved in singing uh, and a lot of that has been covered in the previous lessons a lot of that is is absolutely right those muscles this muscles that work um things that you can control and whatever to to support and and, and uh, give your singing a real foundation but the problem that i sometimes find is that if you spend too much energy thinking about specific things actually you can get lost uh, in in why you're doing it in the first place uh, especially when it comes to muscles, because the thing with muscles is that, uh, and, I, and Stefan Logos talked about this in his uh, first lesson, um, is that you, you have very limited control over certain muscles, uh, and often you can only activate them like by thinking about something else, whether it's an idea or by moving another part of your body that then allows that muscle to work. And I'll give you the example, which I find quite useful. So if I said to you, you know, uh, flex your bicep, you would most likely raise your arm up to your side, maybe clench your fist, your forearm would tense, and then you do something that, a combination of things that sort of tightens that muscle. Um, now, if I said to you, okay, do the same thing, flex your bicep, but you're not allowed to raise your arm up, you're not allowed to do anything with your shoulder, elbow, or wrists, now flex it. You probably can't do that. Well, in fact, you can't do that. Because in order for this muscle to work, you need a series of other things to happen. So it's the same with the muscles that are necessary for singing. A lot of them, we need other stuff to happen for them to work naturally. And they're designed to work, you know, in, a lot of them are designed to work involuntarily by themselves without you really thinking, right, 
now release or now tend, you know. So um, that's the problem with muscles. So what I've found is it's easier to find areas of your body that you can have a greater sense of sort of feedback that you can actually release them and you can feel that looseness um, and therefore allowing the other muscles to sort of work on their own accord. So at the beginning of, um, of any practice session or warm-up session that I was doing, I, I would start with thinking about three things. First is my neck. So, um, I mean, if you want to do uh, join in with me, it's the best way to sort of feel what I'm talking about. So I want to get a really free and loose neck so that my head is just sort of balancing on top uh, and is held there sort of by the alignment on top of the spine rather than the muscles themselves doing any heavy lifting work. So what I'll do to begin with is, is start sort of almost like wobbling my head around until I find some sort of uh, uh, that magical spot in the middle where it's just sort of perfectly balanced. Now, to really find this, you have to let go. And if you find that your head then suddenly flops to one side, forward or back, that's actually a really good thing. It shows that you're letting go. So do that for a little minute. And then what I would do is actually allow my head to flop over to one side. And then I might take it around the front and back around the other way. And then up and again, find that that place where your head just feels like it's floating on top of your spine and I'll do that a few times now this is not a, a stretch stretching is really important and, and has its place but what I'm really talking about now is like freedom of movement freedom of motion so I'll do it a few times but thinking about just moving your head rather than actually like working it round from side to side which is so tempting to do so I'd let my head fall to one side let it fall around the front, back round, and then up, and find again that spot of balance and uh, of floating in the middle. So that's the first thing, my neck. Then I want to think about my shoulders. So uh, it's the same thing with the shoulders. So instead of stretching or straining to do anything, what I want to do is just get used to the, the, sh the, the shoulder moving around without any effort. So an easy way to do this is if with the other arm you grab your upper arm, and you're just going to lift the other arm without doing anything with this side. It's all going to be in this arm. You're going to lift your arm up, move it around this, move it around the joint, move it around the socket. Yeah, up and down to the side. To, and you can hold it up and to make sure that you really have let go of on this side. You can suddenly let go and your shoulder should just fall down. Yeah, to show that there's no tension there. Do the same on the other side. So again, lifting up, there should be no resistance from this side, lifting it up and then holding it up. And then just to make sure that there's no tension there, you let go and your arm should just flop down. Now, once you get comfortable with that, you can do that on both sides without sort of assisting. You can just lift your arms up and down, your, your shoulders up and down in any old fashion. It doesn't have to be coordinated. You can even sort of hold them there for a second and then just drop to feel that release. Now, I want to do that with the neck being free so uh, you can find that balance and then play around and then you can even flop your neck to one side as you're doing it flop it to the other side and then find that balance in the middle so that you're getting that f feeling that all of this area is released and free so that's my neck shoulders and then the third thing is hips now uh in the lesson so far there's uh uh, been a lot of talk about uh, the role that the pelvis plays in singing, uh, um, which is just absolutely vital and important to understand uh, how important that is. But going back to my idea about uh, finding the things that you have a greater sense of what you can tr control and what you can feel, um, I think about my my hips and uh, you know my the whole joints around all of the joints around there, so that. Uh, if you really let go and loosen, you can do this with me when you're standing up. You almost start, to, if you let go of your hips, think about specifically your hips, you find almost as if you could become a bit wobbly, as if you sort of, for a minute, you know, you might wobble over, fall over, and because you're not holding anything anymore. So this is really important. So try it. And I think to exaggerate it, it's good if you move. So if you think... Um, 
almost as if you're doing a bit of salsa if you've done any salsa or it can just be any old movement yeah so you want your hips to be completely free now if there's no one around you can just let go and you know really just have fun with it it's like you're at a wedding party and you you know you've had a few to drink or whatever it's that kind of feeling so that your hips are really free so get used to enjoy that feeling you can e think about that spot where your legs meet your um where your legs connect to your hips and your pelvis in that area think of that being just really loose and you can almost feel it this is what i was talking about that being able to have that feedback that sensory feedback you can feel almost as if there's kind of um you know there's joints are really lubricated and loose and limber yeah so i would keep doing that maybe even walk around the room and then i'd bring my shoulders into it so again moving your shoulders up and down making sure they're loose and then finally thinking about your neck being free at the same time so after you've done that for a while, you should feel really loose and sort of uh, limbered up, supple, ready to go. Um, and I would make sure that I do that before, um, before I've even you know, thought about making any vocal noises, because this is the foundation. You know, if I uh, sometimes, you know, if I'm in a rush to learn some music or something, I'll go straight to the piano. And often those are the worst sessions because, you know, you're, you're struggling against it. If there's any tension there already, it's not going to magically go away. You have to consciously think about it. So do the physical loosening up first. So the second uh, aspect of this is adding an intention to the sound. And this, I, I can't overstate enough how important this is. And actually it was interesting because uh, Frederick Long talked about this he was referring to consonants in his lesson, but the idea of, uh, you know, from an audience perspective, believing that someone means what they're singing. Um, and there's lots of ways you can do that, but you have to, that's something that you have to feel and think about. You know, the last thing you want to do is see a singer who's kind of, and you do get this sometimes, where you see people who almost, you can see they're thinking about the note that's coming up, they're doing something with the, you know, and, and it sort of spoils the illusion of what really, making music, making art is all about. So adding intention to it is really important. Um, and also the benefit of that is that as you do that, automatically your body starts to respond and breathe and do all the right things that it needs to without you thinking about it. Um, uh, if you were trying to grab someone's attention, for example, who's, you know, over there somewhere, um, you would just say, hey, you, you would automatically, your body has done so many things that you haven't thought, oh, I need to take a big breath before I catch this person's attention. You haven't thought, oh, I need to engage something. You know, it just happens. And so your body is remarkable in the way that it can do this. So if you have the right intention, the right direction of thought, a lot of this stuff can happen by itself and you can focus on the thing that you're actually trying to communicate. Um, so I'm going to, what I use for this is a few words. So uh it's going to be hey you who you and uh what i'd like to do is uh, play with the intention so imagining i'm trying to get someone's attention i'm going to say hey you and then imagining i'm the other person i might respond who with that kind of question mark inflection who you and then that re re-emphasis on the final you so it's hey you who? You. So those are the four things that I want to say. Now, the idea behind this is that because you've got a clear intention, imagining a person over there, you're trying to catch your attention. A lot of this stuff that I've talked about, the muscles will be working automatically. But to make sure that no extra attention does creep in, which it might, often uh, a lot of people struggle with is their neck goes forward. You might have another issue. But in order to sort of stop those other bad habits or other things creeping in, I want to bring back the movement, the, the keeping loose. So I might walk on the spot and you can do this kind of in a rhythm is quite useful. So you might do one side, making sure, finding that, uh, that place where your hips are really loose and really free and then loosen your shoulders. And again, the more silly, more ridiculous you feel, the better. And then your neck is loose as well. And then we can try saying these words over the top of it. So I'll go and say, hey, you. Who? You. Okay. So I would do that a few times. Just get used to it. And you might already feel um, certain muscles activating, but I'm, I don't want you to think about it. I just want you to let it happen and focus on what you're communicating. 
Um, so you can play around with that, play around with the intention, do it in different ways. You can say, instead of, hey, you can say, hey, you know, play around with it uh, and walk around the room whilst keep, there's only two things I'm asking you to think about is to keep loose and to have a clear intention as you're doing it. So now uh, I think let's try that with some singing. It's a singing lesson after all. So um, I'm going to take a phrase, you could use this with anything, a warm up or a song that you're singing, a phrase of a song that you're singing at the moment. I'm going to take a phrase from uh, the song The Vagabond from Songs of Travel. This is uh, Vaughan Williams. And the opening line is, give to me the life I love, let the lave go by me. And in, uh, in my own time, what I would do is play around with just speaking that uh, phrase in lots of different ways. Give to me the life I love, let the lave go by me. You know, play around with it, just explore all the different intentions, emotions I can, I can infuse into that. But we've already done some speaking, so I'm going to teach you the, the notes of this phrase. And it goes like this. Give to me the life I love, let the lave go by me. I'll do it one more time, sing along. Give to me the life I love, let the lave go by me. Okay, good. So those, that's just the notes, that's how it goes. But what I want to do now is add this um, intention into it. So what's my intention here? Now, the best way to do this is just to play with extremes. You know, there's later on I'll talk about finding the right kind of emotion, the right intention. But to begin with, you just want to explore the explore all the options, yeah? So an easy one to do is like excitement. It's a really clear thought. So if I try to do this phase, but I'm really channeling just pure excitement, it might look like this. Give to me the life I love. Let the lave go by me. Okay, so you have a go, do it in your own way. And then I could play around with doing it. Maybe I'll try, I could try it in this kind of more despairing kind of way. Give to me the life I love. Let the lave go by me. And there's so many ways you can do that. And uh, hopefully, I mean, I, when I do that, and I'm not even thinking about what quality of sound I'm, that's coming out of my mouth, and hopefully you're not either. You're just thinking about what it is that you're trying to, what emotion you're trying to convey. Um, so then what I would do is get the movement in to make sure that I'm loose. Because again, it could be easy. I might be in a recital. I might be in a tight spot and I just, I, you know, it's easy to get stuck standing there. You might, you know, if you had, a, if it was something else, you had a score. Give to, and it's quite easy to get really stuck. So for now, let's, let's loosen that up by keeping the, those hips moving. Walk, I, I mean, I know it's silly, but just go, go with it, embrace it. So I'd walk around space, get those shoulders loose, hips loose, and your neck is free, and then try the same thing. So I'm gonna go back to the kind of excited, excited energy, and it's gonna be like this, but keeping loose. So ready? Give to me the life I love, let the lave go by me. Okay, so already that's starting to feel, it feels a bit ridiculous, but I start to feel, yes, I'm communicating something. I've got that feeling that there's a sat certain satisfaction that comes with sort of knowing that you've got your message out. Um, so what you then want to do, obviously, I might, some of you might be thinking already, um, well, I, I'm not exactly going to start moving around when I'm doing a recital or a concert or something like that. So what you, what's possible to do is to slowly reduce that movement without losing the sense of freedom. Um, and you can, you, again, you can feel this in your body. You can feel when your neck is tense or when your neck is free. You can feel your shoulders. So gradually, you can maybe, as you're practicing it, do the phrase, start really moving, and then gradually less and less movement until you're sort of still, but you don't feel fixed. So you should still be able to feel that your hips are kind of loose, almost that you could be sort of, not that you could be blown over because you're, you know, the weight of your body is rooted, but that you've got that flexibility in your body as you're standing still. So you could try that, try singing the phrase, but keeping it a little bit more still. Um, and then finding um, a more kind of appropriate emotion, if you like, for the, the phrase that you're singing. And that might be, you might have various different emotions within one piece. So I might, 
let's say excitement maybe isn't the right one for this song. So I might find, um, I don't know, I'll, 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 I'll channel a feeling of just, uh, I don't know how to put this in the words, but just what the words say, give to me the life I love, you know, let anything else go, let the world go by. I'm just going to just give to me this thing. So that's what I'm channeling. Give to me the life I love, let the lave go by me. Okay, so that's, I mean, it's not perfect, but it's just an idea of what I would play with. And my process from first, you know, looking at the music, freeing it up, and then trying to eventually hone to a place where I can actually perform it. So I hope that's been useful for you, or you found something interesting there. Um... I mentioned I had some homework to do from the last session from Susanna, uh, uh, which I find really useful. And it's actually especially useful at, uh, in the phrase in this song. And she was talking about uh, singing, when you're about to sing something, thinking of the consonant at the same pitch that you're about to open the vowel on, um, which is great for this because there's a phrase at the end of the verse that says, there's, there's the life for a man like me. And if I'm sort of too caught up in the character, I might just go, there's the life, and not really think about where I'm placing that first v sound. So I find this useful. So on, uh, on this note, I'm going to take Susanna's advice and, and start, there's, and uh, this phrase actually has a lot of v and l m, so I can really enjoy using this approach. So here we go. I'm going to have a go. There's the life for a man like me. There's the life forever. So there you go. That's, uh, I've done my homework now. Um, and I'd also like to set some homework for whoever uh, is going to take the next singing lesson and for you at home which is just to take any phrase um, of a piece of music that you're looking at, working on at the moment, and try it while moving, keeping those hips loose. Uh, whoever does this next lesson is going to love me for this. Keep those hips, hips loose, keep those shoulders loose, keep your neck loose, and then give it with a really clear intention. Give, try that phrase out with a really clear intention. So that's my homework. I hope you've enjoyed this lesson, got something from it. Um, to find out more about how um, English Touring Opera are supporting their artists, or if you'd like to support them actually, then head to the website, which is englishtouringopera.org.uk for more information. So thanks, that's all from me, and see you again.